Another day in paradise, good people. Alex the Car Doctor, welcome back to another day in life series of Alex the Car Doctor. Guys, do you remember the Dodge journey that yeah. we basically botched? I just gotta say we, you know how this thing works. I didn't do it, but this falls under me. <laughs> we. <laughs> we finally got this thing back up and running. Got the transmission in um, after $2,000 later. Um, so I'm about to go take it on the test drive now and just check over the work of my tech. Um, I'm already seeing some things I don't like, so I'm going to have him pull it back in and check some things and rewash it because I told him to wash it yesterday and just take a look at it. I don't know. You judge. Look at the front. I don't even need to go. I already know. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, man, I really ain't got to do it. Let's look at the inside. Like, we made a bad first impression, guys, so... I'm really trying to make it right with this customer. She's been nothing but nice and patient with me. And, you know, if you're watching this video, shout out to you. Um, you know, I'm doing my best to get this car back to you 100% better than when I had it. That means cleaned up, uh, running good, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not Did you it. tell him a full detail? Uh, probably not, but still, come on, that's common sense. We, we screwed up. You know, why not make it look great, you know? I agree. Yeah, that's, sometimes you got to use your brain. You know, wash, okay. We had this lady car forever. Let's make it look brand new for her. Right. Tie shine at least. You know, look. Oh, my God. Did y'all see that? Let me see. <laughs> God. Oh, did he even, did water even hit that? I don't what? know, man. Uh, all right, I'll be back. Happy test drives. Well, how was it? It has a little hiccup coming out of like second or something. I'm no transmission expert, but I'm going to check the fluid level. Uh, Sometime, from my experience, you got to drive this stuff and let it work in. Um, and I'm going to also see if there's some type of learning procedure for it. Um, I was making sure I wasn't in the way, but it don't, it don't look like it. <laughs> um, so yeah, pull it back in and have him correct those issues that I saw. We'll go from there. Looks like I'm not going to have a lift after all I'm working outside. I thought I was going to have a lift. You know, I'd rather for him to take care of this. All right, guys. Wow, that's being taken care of. Of course, got another Dodge in the shop. Uh, Y'all guess what it is? Write down in the comments right now. I'll take you around. <laughs> check it out. Let me see. Wait a minute. Your head. I know my head anyway. Hey, I normally make it make it click louder, but lift the tick. <laughs> well, rocker, the rocker fell apart. People are always saying. Why well, call it lifters? Um, it's just, it just resonates with regular customers easier. Because I'm always having technicians come, oh, it's, it's not lifters. It's actually the rockers that fail. Guys, I know that. But you don't, it's not normal for customers to hear rocker job. It's normal for them to lifter job. Okay, I, I know what lifters are. It's, it's, it's just easier for the customer. So that's why I say it that way. Um, so it chewed into the cam profile um, on the side profile a little bit. And my rule of thumb is, uh, you probably not gonna see it on camera. Yes, you can put another lifter on that and it'll be fine, but it has that side area for a reason, guys. I believe in the future, if I let it go like this, that by that side being chewed away like it is, the middle will mushroom out, causing more problems for the customer on down the road. When I fix these vehicles, I don't fix them for a one night stand. I fix them to stay away from my shop. I don't want customers coming back to my shop. You know, my wife told me this a long time ago. What I say? Cu babe? Customers are not thrilled to walk into a mechanic shop. Oh yeah, they did. So it's my job 
to first off provide a a great environment for them a trustworthy and a trustworthy environment because you got to think from a customer standpoint they're thinking oh my gosh my car broke down I gotta spend money I don't have. Yeah, it's not like they calling Carnival Cruise. Yeah, <laughs> this is not this is not already pleasant, and I think that's another reason this industry gets such a bad rep. You know, you got other shops out here taking candy from a baby sort of thing. First of all, they're not happy coming there. Then on top of that, you take advantage of. Them. You know, that doesn't sit well with me. Well, we're only doing one because the rest it, of them are fine. Yeah, and normally it's this side. This side is perfectly fine. Uh, my theory, guys, I'm going I'm to say it again for those who may not know, but it's showing that my theory is maybe off because I've been doing a lot of these in the past couple of years, and this side always goes out first. Um, and the reason being, I think, because the crankcase is over here. And if you look, you see the stains. But if you look over here, it's all nice and clean. No stains. Oh, I gotta pull that off later. It's kind of stuck on there. But it's normally very clean over here because the crankcase is not getting pulled up through the side with all the contaminants that, you know, the carbon build up and stuff. And I think that's what's wearing out the lifters on this side. But that's kind of failing because this side is not. So it's really part failure, pretty much. It's bad design and parts. Moving on over here, um, we had a customer that, um, this is a flex plate. Now there's a big difference between a flywheel and a flex plate. But for regular customers, we just call it a flywheel. Um, I'm going to say flywheel to resonate with regular folks. <laughs> the difference being is a flywheel for a manual transmission. A flex plate is for automatic transmission. Um, but this particular customer is a long-term customer of mine. And um, she's always complained about a screeching noise. But I never heard it. Um, what made me check this? I forgot. I was like, okay, you know, we replaced the starter. It has a brand new starter. It shouldn't be making no more screeching noise. Like the starter stick out and it just, you'll hear grinding, sh harsh sh squealing. I don't know. It sounds weird, but this was the problem, guys. The flywheel is supposed to look good like this. This is proper. But then you get right here, it's missing a whole bunch of front teeth. It's grinded away. Look at that big sec section that's missing. Then you get down right here, it becomes good again. So that's why every now and then it'll do it because the flywheel stop right in front of the starter. The flywheel right here, this section stop right in front of the starter. And when the starter go to come out and grab those teeth, the front teeth is missing. So it screeches real bad until it catches good teeth and turns the engine over and starts. That one's getting the flywheel. What else is going on? Over here is one of my wife's for sale cars. Yay! <laughs> I'm gonna, I've already pulled the engine out. I bought a, a lot of, meaning a lot, lot size of wrecked cars. And it needed an engine pretty much. So I bought this car specifically to put an engine in. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, this week, this week's problem. Yeah. <laughs> this week problem. It's always, always a, it's always an issue. Life is always going to be, once once we accept that, that till we die, it's got problems here to stay. Yeah. Just to show us the grass is green. So it's, but I always tell people, all problems have an expiration date. What you was going through last year, you're not going through this year. So Some people, for the most part. Yeah, for the most part. So don't take it that serious, guys. Uh, but my problems is very quick and short. So... This particular car, we was doing, um, taking care of some oil leaks. And um, I think I have a piece of the harness right here. The, after fixing the oil leaks, we started the car. And first of all, I hesitated to start. The check engine light never been on. 
on, on this particular car. And uh, so pulled the codes, it was throwing crankshaft position sensor codes. And I'm like, you know, we really didn't touch that area. You know, it was down there near the harness, but we didn't really mess with the crankshaft position. So I called the customer, I'm like, you don't have the check engine light on. I don't remember seeing it. He was like, no, nah, I've never been on. I was like, let me look into it some more. Um, I don't even have the bad piece of the harness, but maybe this is it. I don't know. But anywho, I investigated and the insulation from where the oil was leaking had, um, had basically ate its way through the shielding for the wire. So it was exposed wire and it was all real close and touching each other like so. And um, I tried to separate it a little bit and I think it blew a fuse and the car won't even start now, even though we've replaced the harness. So I'm gonna make sure the wires are oriented right before I start looking into computer issues. I hopefully I haven't burned up a computer. If so, just have to fix it. <laughs> right, what do they call it, you know, stuff like this? Yeah. Most shops would say, well, your computer burnout. out. They wouldn't even- Take responsibility. But we have to take some kind of responsibility, even though the initial problem was the oil leak that he let go on forever or whatever mm -hmm. that caused this, you know, it's what do you call it? Um, Not catastrophic failure, but consequential damage. Yeah. Am I saying it right? I don't yeah, know. yeah. It, it, <laughs> you know, ultimately, it's not no one's fault. We had to remove certain parts and we, we probably bumped into the harness and it probably made the, one of the wires touch or something. It was probably already corroded away like that. Well, I got faith in you, handsome mechanic. That's right. You're gonna do it. <laughs> got the windshield. Yeah, got the windshield. Just waiting on the roof get repaired for the Honda. Um, the Odyssey van, so. We, we chuck it along here. <laughs> All right, guys, so what I'm doing now is looking up the torque specification on the wheel hub assembly for that truck over there. Um, it's very important that you torque this stuff down so you won't have any future issues. Now, I've never heard of any issues of not torquing it down, just using the method good and tight, the German torque spec. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm a professional shop um, and always do things 100% of the correct way, you know, 100% of my ability. Um, so yeah, that includes looking up the torque spec and torquing the hub assembly down. <laughs> Why are you doing that? I just want to show off this nice gift that I bought you that you don't use. I'm not gonna use it. I got this from, oh, I'm knocking stuff down over here. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, I'm the one who organized this stuff. A little gold. Um, Ratchet from Harbor Freight. I got it for Father's Day. He don't want to use it, I guess. It's too nice. And I thought it'd be cool. Don't worry about this picture. I hate this picture of me, but he loves it. This is young Alex. Look at him. Wasn't he cute? Oh, that's my clean air. When he was emissions inspector. And this is an even younger Alex. When he went to uh, Atlanta, Tech. Atlanta Tech for breaks during his senior year in high school. So there you go, people. A little Alex history. I'm gonna go set up because you're gonna film that Tahoe job, right? Yeah. All right. So we got a filter. Should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my bad. I was in your way. Oh, my thing is up my tray. Hey, man, when are you gonna clean this? I feel like as a wife, I buy you stuff to make your life easy. No com no comment. The Alex the car doctor has no comment. I, I should have called this video a day in the life of a YouTube mechanic because I'm actually about to make a video on this truck. Alright, this should be everything I need. Got my torque wrench. Have a tripod, a new part, and I need a flat edge screwdriver. Pull off the cap. Okay. All right, um, actually got to work outside today because uh, my shop is full. 
Um, but this on this, I'm getting ready to do the wheel bearing on this particular truck. Um, this video has its own video, of course. So I mean, me... vehicle has its own video. What'd I say? Video got its own video. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Let me let y'all listen to it. Oh, he's got the air blowing going on. Huh? Yeah, hopefully he can hear it. Trust me, it's making noise. <laughs> So I'll let you set up and get to it, give you your phone and uh Alrighty. So it's like we'll a plan. Cut in when it gets done. Alright. I'm just gonna place this somewhere out the way. Finish the wheel bearing, that customer is gone. While y'all guys were in the background <laughs> somewhere, I pulled this one in and um Diagnosed it and she was complaining about loss of power. Um, diagnosed it and I found that it had a stopped up cat. With the stopped up cat, you have good acceleration, but when it heats up, um, you start the car start bogging down real bad. Now, I know it's a bad cat, um, not not only because of my test, but this is this is a giveaway. Okay, so this is a normal oxygen sensor placement right here. It goes into the stream with the catalytic converter. This is the downstream. And basically, the downstream oxygen sensor, all it does is a quality control check. It tells the computer, okay, cat, you're doing your job. You're cleaning. Let's take a look at the other one over here. This is a spacer. They take the oxygen sensor out the stream to fool the computer, thinking that you know, the computer think the cat is good because the oxygen sensor is no longer in the stream and it's giving a false reading. Um, if you do that, um, yeah, it probably worked right away, but the computer is picking up a bad catalytic converter. And if you do that, eventually the catalytic converter is just going to stop up, plunge up, and it's going to be in a situation like this. So, and speaking of this customer, I just heard something sad, man. Uh, this customer, uh, she's a female. She had a boyfriend. That's who I actually bought my cutlass from right here. And I just figure, you know, just found out he died in a house fire, so it's pretty sad, man. Recently. It's, yeah, recently, so it's been a very hard year for us, so. I, that's the thing about this, this industry, you know. We, people we, be going through. Yeah, people be going yeah. through, and you know, one minute somebody's alive, next minute they're gone. Um, and it's very heartbreaking, so, you know, my prayers go up to her, of course. For her, not for to her. her. Yeah. Just a little ball. Stop thinking right. Yeah, I know. The cats are expensive, and like I mentioned, it's been a hard year for us, so she's probably going to go trade it in. And that's why I say, man, it's, this industry is hard the for sale side and the repair side. She just recently bought that car, too, and they sold it to her like that. So, making matters worse on an already worse situation. And, I think those cats were like $800 to $1,000 for the right ones. Yes, you can go online and get some $300 cats, um, but they're not going to last. Um, so that's my two cents. <laughs> two days later. I was editing this video, and I realized I didn't close it out. But let me give you guys a quick update of what's going on. So got the Acura all figured out. Um, after replacing the harness, we, I think this is part of it right here. Yeah, after replacing the harness, we had the wires backwards. So this wire was over here. It was just flipped around the wrong way. So tra tracing down that, figure that out. It starts up, run perfectly fine. Check out the Honda guys. The windshield's all in. It's ready to go back to the customer. So I'm pretty happy about that. The body work has been done. Man, it was like a gap about this size because um, they put the windshield on and you know looked at the gap and it was it was huge that windshield was bowed in so bad about the dodge journey that is finally gone customer is very happy with it i always tell people all problems have an expiration date as long as that sun shining you know you got to push on you know what you was going through last year you're not currently going through so you got to remember that and keep moving forward everything will be all right <laughs> Long as you, especially as long as you got family and loved ones around you, lean towards that. 
on that note good people i love you make sure you like and support by hitting that like and subscribe button alex car doctor i'll see you guys on the next one